Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Andy Jenkinson, the caravan industry expert. Citroen BX. Now this to me puts Citroen on the map. And I actually fancied one of these when I was getting um, my second company car and I was uh, going to uh, buy my first car then. so that would be about 1984-85 and they made I think a 1.4 petrol engine one of these um, but the dealer near me was pretty dodgy I think at the time uh, and he ended up going bust and, and, and strange thing. But I remember the slogan for the Citroen BX it was Loves driving, hates garages, um, and they were very successful. I brought them around again. I think it's first of quite a few felt a bit. Uh, they ran for four, for uh, twelve years before being replaced by the Exanti, which I had one. But I did always fancy one of these BXs. I always fancied on the diesel, um, the 1.9. But the Exanti came along, and some years later. Um, I third company car, I think it was a fourth. Um, I went for an exam to turn the car on at the time. But yeah, I remember these quite, they were very modern. Very, very uh, outlandish work, the Citroen was very forward thinking. And that put a lot of, a lot of buyers off in the UK. They were a bit too quirky for some folk. And they're self loving suspension. Hydroglobes, I think they had in the back, you had to have them replaced every now and again with the fluid. That makes Xanti had to do. Yeah. So what else there is. And usually the caravan shows is obviously full of caravans down here. Um, but obviously cars. Uh, I'm just looking at walls are there on the top of the box. Cars in Volvo, I think. That was at the top there, gosh, I remember those. They were nice cars at the time. I think they had a six cylinder engine, but it was a 22 litre. It was a 2200 uh, cc. We'll go down there in a minute now. I'm here on the wine stand. Um, the wine's punched, and I have a wine to do that option. Um, I'm very doing some product deposits across the surface because if I just slap one end and go to the other, I create a gradient. Of course. I use the lowest speed for handling. Sports car magazine because uh, one of my old editors uh, moved over to there. Alistair Clement, um, great guy. Worked with him on practical caravan for, for a couple of years and uh, he was he was always good for me. Uh, and I missed him. He's uh, on the awards apparently having some classic car awards. So. Um, but that yeah. But anyway, I've come over here onto TVR and one of the reasons is because TVR were literally made down the road from me. Uh, they used to test the cars coming past uh, our house. Um, each one was tested as it left the production line. And um, that happened in the mid to late 80s. And then the council put a stop to it. Um, so that was the end of that. Um, but TVR, yes, they were uh, a small engineering company uh, making these sports cars by the 60s. A guy called Wheeler. And I remember uh, a company I used to work for, we, 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 we were next door to TVR and we always wanted, we always had to shift their cars, their workers' cars to get our, our lorries in and um, oh god they could be really off hand with the TVR guys, they didn't like moving the cars so we could get our containers in. 
but these were great cars. Um, there were quality issues with them. Um, and again, it was one of those stories where eventually somebody comes and buys the company. In this case, it was a Russian guy. Oh, well, that, that he was going to build speedboats. So he basically just shut the company down. The TVR name then hung around, and there was actually um, uh, rumours it was going to build. It built at Blackpool again, uh, but that never materialised, of course. And then there was this thing about them being made in Wales, which I still believe has not really happened. So these cars were a real British sports car classic and they were made at Blackpool well just outside of Blackpool and every year they have the team, look at that engine, look at that wow eventually I think they did their own engines in the end um, but they did um, literally employ about 300 people I can remember seeing the old moulding the moulds of the cars just stacked outside the factory because our, our company I work for just backed onto them and I probably took some pictures back in the day, but I'd love to find them. They really were smart cars. This is one of the very last ones. And it's such a shame that they went, because they were a, a classic car. And to my mind, I think they just started to really make their, their way um, into the um, desirability. These were some of the original, oh, this white one here. One of the original, uh, original ones. Um, they did a square version, which is just at the top here, it's about 1988 to 1. And I think they had a fire at the factory, they had one or two fires at the factory, as I was about to suspect. But I remember these ones here, I think it was at the Tasman. Um, and I remember seeing these, and I don't think these look particularly very good. I always thought they just looked a bit iffy. I don't think they made them very long in that profile. <laughs> in 2022 apparently is the 70th anniversary of TV now. So if you're in Blackpool when you turn up, it's a spectacle to see a lot of TVRs going along the prom and going to the old factory uh, down the road from me and um, what's left of the factory. But still bits of it left and I think there's a, a car place there that does a bit of TVR work actually. Like a bit of restoration and things like that. But yeah, that's TVR. Another one of our great British cars. Another name that went. What a shame. Now I'll say to you about this thing about normal cars. And I, I, I'm, st I'm into normal cars. Um, the Morris Hotel 1980, of course, it was a marina. It had a bit of Italian styling. But it was still made at Longbridge and it still broke down and only bits from off it. Which is rather a shame. I remember Dad looking at one of these. Um, looking at a red one it was and a, a new one. And in the end we both just said, it's really a nice marina, isn't it Dad? And he said, yep. Yeah. Driven it, test drove it, didn't really like it very much. So he never bothered, he ended up getting a Vauxhall, I think he got a Vauxhall Astra or Cavalier. Um, he had two new Astras, which are really nice, good little cars. Um, I've not seen any here today, but I presume they will be, it's not the right places. But yeah, that's the Morris of Town. Wow. There was quite a few of those knocking around at one time. But they were up against it with the Coatina and the Cavalier. They didn't really stand much of a chance, to be quite honest. So what else is Right, and I was saying about Vauxhalls and what have you. Now, I had an Opal Skona, uh, which was basically Vauxhall Cavalier, but it was in this colour, a pale blue colour. This is a Cadet. And I learned, uh, I taught, so I learned, I taught my friend's girlfriend to drive in an Opel Cadet. Um, a few hairy moments, frightened me to death a few times, but on the whole, they were quite easy to do to drive in. Those was in like a beige colour on a K reg, so it was a 72 at the time, that would be 1976, 77, so it was five years old, but it felt a lot older at that time. But this, of course, was a Vauxhall Chevette back in 
the UK. And it's good to see. I wonder if you've got an open stone around there. Not quite the old hang on. Wow, I can't see one. But what a shame. I really like the open stone. It handled really well. It was basically a Mark 1 Cavalier. Look at these Vauxhalls. These Vivas. God. And the original Vivas at the back here, look. Sale 375. Oh, much like the wife, she went brought that back. Told that was a new car. Got sold the Viva GT. That would be pretty rare. I can't remember seeing those much as a kid. But the Viva was still quite a popular car. Now I'm going to quickly have a look here over here in a minute because I've seen something else over there. I'm going to go on over there in a minute. Uh, but I've seen this one here, this Vauxhall here. And this is the Ventura. Now, I remember these. I remember Dad having a look at them. Uh, not the estate version, but it was a, a saloon. And do you know what? I thought they were nice cars, and Dad did as well. He was always put off about Vauxhalls being a bit of a rust bucket, because they did in the day. So this would be on Enred, P, probably getting towards the last of the, the build. Um, certainly different from the original one, because uh, I think the original one just had a single headlamp at the front and, and not quite pr protruding front grille. But they were nice cars. I just love how they've been looked after. Yeah. They were really smart cars. Now some Opals over here. I bet the, the Mantas, oh jeez, I just wanted a Manta. I just loved the Opal Mantas. And Vauxhall did their version of it as well. Now I can't remember what that was called. Ah, now then, hang on, hang on. Now I've just found, yeah, it's an Opal Scone. And it is a rally car version. Mine was a four door 1.6 basic. It's been my old manager's, done 20,000 miles, and I managed to get rid of it, uh, get, should I say, get rid of my Datsun's, Datsun Bluebird estate, which I'd been given, as my first company car, I cleaned it up, and the boss said, do you know what, you've looked after that car, lad, you can have your, uh, the manager's, which was a bit newer, two years old, Opel Skona, impaled blue, and it really handled well. Even though it was a 1.6 engine, it would move. Uh, in the early days, when it got wet though, for some reason it would misfire, add it into a garage, and they could never really find out what was wrong with it. But eventually, I think it, it, it righted itself, I don't know how. Uh, but I remember a Volvo, uh, one, which one would it be? Uh, 240, uh, shunting me at the back end. And from there on, the front used to actually after being repaired, he used to let water in the, the front uh, passenger well. But it was a good car. Basic, but well, a good car. And I think the sharp stereo in there, sharp stereo cassette with FM radio, how about that? But yeah, happy memories. FCW 4 and 8S, that was the number of it. Right, I've just seen the caravan over there looking like a Monza. I want to see what it's doing because it doesn't look like it's on. Well, it should be on. It's, like it's on the back of a, a van of some description. Let's go and have a look. Right, well, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. Um, VW spot screen. I think people get out of the way. With a Monza 1000 caravan on the back. Someone's crucified. Oh, my goodness. Yep, yeah, can't see any very well. Probably a good job of the two setting. Look at this. Whew. So this is a Monza 1000. And it's looking. Oh, look, they've left the back jam up. Monza at the bottom look. Model year, I would say probably it was a 79 original. If not 79 or 78, I can't really tell properly. It's a 78, I think. 
So a lot of mum's a thousand and it's been put on the back of a VW. How, how on earth have they done that? It looks a bit of an abortion, but... They've called it snail. Look at that exhaust at the back there. That's incredible. Look at that. So this car that was built at Beverly in the 70s has ended up on a German built vehicle. Incredible. Let's have a quick look. Let's have another quick look inside again. Come on, let's have a quick look. <clears throat> right, yeah. So the Mons 1000 didn't have a loo compartment. So here, what they've done, they've moved that kitchen forward because where this seat here would be another seat at the end there. This would have been the front of the caravan, uh, that the back end at the rear. They've extended those um, seats so you could possibly lie out fully stretched on them. They would be short originally. Uh, unless, of course, it's not a Monza 1000, it's the, 12, it's the 1200. Um, but it's looking like 1000 to me. Um, and they've had a bit of a play about with it. Yeah. So it's been knocked about, as I'd say, but hey, a few people have been looking at it, what's it sound like? Oh, sorry. Oops, sorry about that. Now some camper vans here, and every show is always going to be a camper van. Look at this inside. You see that? Look at that. Yeah, an old bike on there. What if it works? Yeah, I bet you had to pray every time you went out in this. Okay. I don't know what the conversion is on this. Uh, with a strap top, they were usually dormer bills. Um, but it doesn't look like a dormer bill to me. I might ask and find out. But it's, in, it's obviously all been restored, so it's been worth a few quid. Um, it's right on drive. All for those dog bunk beds at the top here, look. Things were primitive back in the day. I've just had a phone call from my mate Roger with his car, and he's going to go in a minute, so, which is rather shame because I thought we'd go here till, till the end. It is not. So this is 1967, 67 VW. Um, this camp van, it does possibly look like it could be done with. Really. Yeah, time right now. There's a little next to it. Always, these classic shows, you always see these sort of things. The VW stuff really comes out. It's good stuff in it. Gosh. Yeah, I think someone's had a bit of a play about it. Is that maybe? I don't know. It looks very sort of 60s. I don't know if someone's done a recent conversion on that. Possibly has. Might tell you on the other side. Though. This one's up for sale. Again, you can say how much. You just have to inquire, wouldn't you? So it was 1954. It was delivered to a dealership in London. Um, so I think someone has retrofitted it inside. It's not. It wasn't. A camper van when it was it was new. So these would only just be coming in the country really about that time. So to see one of these on the road would have been quite rare. But anyway, they really do look splendid. They look good.
Right, I'm going to go and see what else there is. The show's getting close to ending now. Um, you really do need two days at this show, really. Because um, there's a lot to see. Yeah, that's splendid. Shot of VWs. All night for shiny. Oh, yeah, it's in 1800. Now this is a Mark 1 version, I think, from, my, from what I can see. If the lights are horizontal, it will be a Mark 1. Yes, it is. We had the Mark 2, and we thought this car was massive inside. Look at that space. I remember trying to learn to drive in one of these, and I remember my dad just saying, get in, have a go, and I know he took the garage doors away. He didn't let me do that again in a hurry. Now this one's in a very nice maroon, but Dad had one in a boring white. I can remember the number plate, that was VFV197K. And he also had a Morris version. And that was in Battleship Grey. The guy there looking. But we, they were great for towing because you could pump that suspension. It was hydroelastic so you could, you know, put the suspension up so it was soft. And this is the Woolsey version, which is much luxurious. My friend's dad had one of these in a mustardy colour. Um, or wood veneer. And that was sort of like the upmarket version of the Austin 1800. The Morris 1800. They made a three litre version of this. Now I'm just thinking if this is a Mark II. No, it's a Mark 1. Right, my phone's going better on to that. Might be the missus. <laughs> I mean, the Capri, the inch out to the light. I think they made it to about 1985, 86, I think. Um, and I think by that time it had lost its glow. There was other vehicles around, there was the Open Manta and, and, uh, and such. So it had a lot more competition. I'm just looking at the Mark III Cortinas. Yeah. Dad bought a new one in 1972, he bought an XL. Which we told our Wellington car on with. Then in, I think a year too late, ooh, I don't know, 1972, in, by 1976 we bought the last of the Mark III's. Look at these now, and they do feel rather, they don't feel all that well made, do they? But they were at the time, 1.6. And then when the Mark IV came out, which I thought looked a really nice car, to be quite honest, me and Dad went to have a look at one in the showroom when they just launched and we liked them Dad thought they'd gone to back towards the Mark IIs but these were stylish cars this is what Motoring was about in the 70s and as kids at school I oh, used to talk about the latest Cortinas and Capri's and Vauxhall Forenzas and that sort of thing it was good different days there we go, there's the early Capri. Yeah. I must admit, they did look nice. Um, the one that we looked at was a green one, a metallic green, which was then okay, we ended up getting a 16 year. I think they've tried one out, but he said the core team was better. Better for us. Which I suppose it was. Right. I'm going to call this video a day. I'm going to have a quick round up. Right. 
I'm coming to the end of the show now and uh, now I'll give you a review of my show in a minute. This is my friend's car, I've, I've just missed him because he had to go. This is a, I think a 1935 um, Austin 10. Um, I can't get in now because it's locked of course, but it's a lovely little car, it's a super car. And um, uh, he's had it resprayed a few years ago, but it really is a nice car. I've not sat in it, I'd love to drive it. I don't want to drive it. He said he drove it in some rush hour traffic here to get to the stand the other day and he said it was quite hairy. Uh, because modern cars of course go a lot quicker. Back in the day, things didn't go as quick. So I think top speed on this is about 50 odd miles an hour. Um, which would probably be fast enough because the brakes wouldn't be as good in that day. Look at that, it's a lovely car. There's a nice spray job done on it as well. So, when you got it, you needed a bit of TLC. The seats and everything we think are very original. It's an 83,000 miles, which we think that is possibly the original mileage even. It's had a few owners over its years, but here it is on the stand on the Austin 10 Drivers Club stand. And just across the way there is the Austin 7s, otherwise known as Little Chummies. Right, I'm going to wrap this video up very shortly and give you a summary of this show. I'm just going down and down to Hall 8, I don't know what's down here. Um, Well, that's the end of the show for me. Um, it's been enjoyable. Oh, hang on, I missed out a motorhome down here. Hang on, it's not the end, it's not yet. I'm going to go down, I think it looks like a Jennings. I'm going down anyway. Don't want to miss this one out. I don't know what time it is. Hoping I've got enough time to get down there. Hoping there's somebody around. If not, I'm scuppered. It's looking like a Jennings coach belt. Oh, I bet they've gone. The people. They might let me in. Right, I've just missed the guy. So the show is just short, but it is a Jennings. It's a Road Ranger. I can't see in there. I'd have loved to have gotten that look in there. Uh, those curtains look very familiar. Definitely 70s curtains. And a Ford Transit. Jennings were um, made at Sandbach in Cheshire and in the early days, in the 30s, they actually made caravans. Uh, they eventually became part of ERF. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure if they were, the Jennings name was sold off or it just literally disappeared. I can't think off the top of my head at the moment. But what a shame I couldn't get in that. It's a it's on the Ford Transit Custom. Um, so people have been signing it. Somebody or other. It's a shame there's nobody's actually here to get any information out of. Oh, I'd love to look at that. Jennings were another manufacturer that had a, a reputation for quality interiors. Um, they really were. I love them. What a shame I missed out on that. Just as I was about to wrap up, I've been down that bottom end and I didn't see it. What a shame. We'll be again next time, eh? I'll probably track it soon. Love to have gotten another look at that. Well, I missed out on that. I'm a bit, bit annoyed really. I'd like to kind of look to that. Uh, the show's now ended. Uh, that's a counter motor show and they're very keen to get people out. Uh, I can't blame them, but they are quite sort of assertive in saying, come on, get out. Um, so yeah, what do I think of the show? I think it's been a decent show. I'd say it's not been, uh, the last time I came here was in 2019, and I would definitely say there's been not as much to see as there was in 2019. And I think because there's a few things about that, I think costs have gone up tremendously for the stands, <laughs> the people getting here. 
and I think really that must have had a knock-on effect. But if you first visit this show, you'll still find something here to 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 get your juices flowing, as it were. Um, there is still plenty of cars to look at, lots of nostalgia, um, lots of little side stalls. I'd say it's well worth coming. It's not cheap to get in, but it's well worth coming. Um, yeah. But I think, as I say, cost and price have definitely put things off. Now, I'm going to go to Weatherspoons if it's open and find myself and get a quick pint, I think, or something, or half a pint, and, and have a sit down and have a rest because I've been on my feet most of the day. So, um, yeah. I'll see you in the car show, what do you think? Um, not bad. Pretty good. Um, we'll say, I don't know if it's as much as it was the year before. <coughs> I think that's bound to cost, really. Just have a quick pint in leather spoons. I think there's been some other sort of convention on there, you know, some film convention. Where everybody gets dressed up, it's really good. Um, but yeah, it's been a good, that good show, and I, I, I think I've got some video clips. I hope you like them. Um, say, obviously, I'm mainly caravans and motons and what have you. But at the end of the day, uh, I just like to throw the things in the mix, like I've said, um, you know, with the classic stuff. Uh, I like the whole innovation show just different bits of things and um, you know I, I might even do some little walk type videos I don't know um, what I've got coming up I've got some more um, caravan reviews that I'm sure will be coming up there's the uh, Swift Elegance that's just gone on on this last day or two yeah so well, I hope you've enjoyed the channel I hope you've enjoyed this this, uh, this particular um, video uh, and cheers and uh, I'll see you on the next one please like please keep subscribing um, please just keep doing your comments as well I do I do really appreciate it and it's great to see the subscribers as well um, so I'll see what next show is going to be on the calendar in theory the Manchester show is back on but I don't know I can't see that happening personally the Glasgow show, I used to do the Glasgow show a lot, but I don't know if I'm going to be doing that this time. Again, costs may be prohibitive, it may not work out worthwhile to do. So it looks like it'll be the February show, I'll be back here again in the NEC. But just on one note, uh, doing the shows, uh, I've done three shows here this last few weeks, and by the time I get home tonight, I'll have done over, I think, just over 2,000 miles just going backwards and forwards to the NEC. So, and then there's all the walking around, so I think I've done about, I think I might walk about three miles a day. So I've probably done about 20 odd miles around here over the last couple of weeks. So um, yeah, it's time now to get on with some book work and, uh, and catch up really. Anyway, as I say, I won't keep wobbling on, sorry about that. I shall catch you on the next video. Please keep liking, please keep subscribing. I know I've already said that, I'm going to say it again. Anyway, cheers. hope you like them please don't forget to press the thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel bye for now